thank you uh, for the organizers for inviting me and uh, having the opportunity to, to give a talk. Uh, okay, so I'm going to talk about, as the title says, about first of the existence of some aperiodic multiplicative functions. So uh, we'll see some, some number theory in a while. Uh, uh, I tried to, <clears throat> so, so the first three, four slides, so this is rather standard. So I, I tried to be quick and then, then I promised that I slow down. Uh, okay, so topological dynamical system. So, so it's simply we consider homeomorphisms of compact metric spaces. Usually, these homeomorphisms they will be given uh, as subshifts. So notation is that we have a, com a compact alphabet, not necessarily finite it will be really compact uh, so this alphabet a will be usually a subset of the of the unit disk and then we consider then we consider as subshifts so two-sided uh, closed s invariant subsets of two-sided sequences uh, and if we have just one sequence one two-sided sequence so we by x, so the sequence is the sequence is u. So then by x sub u, we denote the, the subshift generated by by u. So the problem is that well, usually some classical arithmetic functions they are given as one-sided sequences, but that's not really a problem. So one way of of coping with it is that, for example, we symmetrize our functions and then then we pass to the usual subshift. I will not come back to this kind of problems. Uh, so, so let's take an, uh, an example. So the Louisville function. So the Louisville function is just taking two values plus one minus one. And if you have a uh, number n, so then you take the decomposition into, into the primes and we want to see what is the parity of these primes. In other, in other words, it's minus one to the power well, of the, the number of, of the primes in the, into the composition of, of n counted with multiplicity. But then we have a Louisville subshift, and this Louisville subshift is a subshift contained in the full shift whose alphabet is minus one, one. Uh, I said, Omega n is, is the sum of, is the number of prime factors of n counted with multiplicity. Uh, I did, well, in fact, in, in what follows, I will be using maybe more Lebius function, but uh, the definition will appear maybe on the blackboard. So. Okay, so now the uh, topological dynamics, visible measures. So M of X is the space of prob uh, probability border measures which we equip with the weak star topology. And then the notation, the ergodic measures, the invariant measures. So this is, this, this, this is very standard. So one way to prove that this set is non-empty is to take, take so-called empiric measures. So in other words, I fix a point in my space. Then you look at its orbit, just find a, find a piece, I mean, the beginning of this, of this orbit, and then we, then we average. We, when we pass to the limit, we obtain a C invariant measure. Uh, okay, so because of compactness, then of course, we will obtain in this way, some measures which are a T invariant. So this set is, ne is, is never empty. Uh, and then, so what may happen when we look at this sequence here, this of empiric measures, it may converge, it may not converge, it converge, uh, along, a su uh, along a subsequence. So here, here are just also standard, standard <laughs> names. So a point is generic if the sequence of, of <clears throat> if the sequence of empiric measures just, just converges. If it takes place only along a subsequence, then it is called quasi-generic. 
So of course, each point is quasi generic because of compactness. And then we have a subset. But of course, if we take a measure which is invariant, it need not have a point which determines it in this sense. So those measures for which there is a quasi generic point, they are called visible measures. Uh, okay, so that's very standard. So maybe if, if you look at the first line, so now you see something which is less standard. Because in, in ergodic theory, in dynamics, we are used to, to deal with Cesaro uh, averaging. Uh, while this is not so common, or this is not so obvious that this is the only, the only way of averaging in other branches of mathematics, like, like in number theory. So here, we can also consider logarithmic, logarithmic way of averaging. So I wrote here what does, what does it mean? We consider, again, empiric measures, but we give weights. So here the weights are 1 over n. So of course, we have to normalize this. But you see that this number, is, this ln, is something like log, log of n. Nothing changes it with log n. OK, so then uh, you can repeat these exercises uh, for our proof from the, from the previous, previous page to, to, show, to show the existence of invariant measures. And you can see that here, if we take the, the limit, any limit, we will also obtain a measure which is the invariant. Okay, so then we have measures logarithm, I mean, visible in the logarithmic sense. Uh, okay, and what we can say about these sets of, of visible measures? Well, so there are two possibilities. Either the point X is generic, and then of course, there is only one visible measure from that point, or there, are, there, are sub, there is a subsequence, there are two subsequent. But then it turns out that this set has to be enormous, it has to be uncountable. So, then, so it's either you obtain one visible measure from one point, or it is, it is uncountable, and the exercise is to show that these sets of visible measures are, are simply connected. Okay, and then, if we take a compact subset of the disk, and if we take uh, if we take a sequence, on, so so then we can consider so we can consider the sequence U, which may be also called an arithmetic function. Uh, we can consider this as a point in the subsheet generated by this by this sequence, right? So we see a double double role of of you, we start with something, some object, which is known to us. We, we take the subject, but then we, this, we treat this object as a point in that space. So once we treat this as a point in the space, we can, we can consider empiric measures. And we obtain some invariant measures, which are supported by the subject generated by this, by this sequence. OK, so that's the crucial notion. Uh, so the definition tells us that a first and back system of, of an arithmetic function is any, is any vis visible measure from that point treated, uh, for that sequence treated as a point in the subsheet generated by it. And the logarithmic first and back systems are defined similarly. Okay, so now I pass to the part of my talk, which consists of telling you many, many conjectures. Uh, so I, I will skip the most complicated one, but well, so let's start from the, maybe the most famous one. So this is Chawla conjecture from 1965. Uh, so this is about autocorrelations of the Louisville function. And you see that, well, you see this. You see this expression. We want to see that, in fact, all these limits are equal are equal to zero for any for any different translates. Uh, so, how to read this kind of this kind of 
conjectures when we apply our approach. So in other words, now we look at the Louisville function that that's a point in, in the space. We, and we look at visible measures from, the, from that point. And it's not, it's not difficult to see that in fact, this is equivalent to saying that the Louisville function, uh, that Chawla conjecture holds if and only if the Louisville function is a generic point for the Bernoulli measure one half, one half. So for the Bernoulli measure, so the, the, the measure is one half, one half, and the subsheet on which well, the game takes place is just the subsheet minus one, one to the Z. Uh, so you may wonder, okay, but I don't know what is, what is the, what, uh, I said before that, I said before that, uh, well, we should, we should do our job on the subject generated by by the point, so by by the reveal function. But we don't know what is this was what is the subject, what is the subject. But if Chawla conjecture holds, so then what we obtain is just the full sub subject, right? Because the, new, the, the support of the new measure is full. Uh, in fact, okay. So this was Chawla's 1965. Uh, you can change, of course, these functions here. So it's lambda. We will do it even in a more drastic way in a while. Uh, but you can also formulate Chawla conjecture for for the Mebius function. So I <coughs> I should write what is what is Mebius. So this is minus one to the k. Okay, so mu of P1 PK is minus one to the K, mu of one is one, one, and then mu of N is equal to zero for the remaining N. So in other words, uh, as yesterday Johan uh, already introduced, uh, it's the case where and it's not, it's not square free. Uh, so then you see that it, 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 it has changed a little bit, the Chawla conjecture, because now you see that the function mu, uh, and, well, I should, here there are powers, right? And now the subshift, if you, if you look at mu, so the difference between mu and, and, and the real is the Mebius and the real is that you have zeros and you have a lot of zeros, the density of zeros, the density of zeros is three, uh, no, it's one minus six of p square. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, but you see that powers, they, has, they have changed. So the reason is that we have the zeros because in, we should, we should uh, in general, I mean, if you look at the real functions, we don't see powers here. Because if we put powers, so it, it makes no sense because either we kill, or I mean, if you, if, you, if, you put, if you put the even number, or you just remain the same if, this, if the number is odd. But with the Mebius, of course, there will be a problem because if I put everywhere even numbers, so then I see correlations of the, of the characteristic function of square free numbers. And then, of course, it's not zero, right? Because the density density of ones is not is not zero. So then, so then you write this expression. So the point is, what does it mean? Uh, so Jan yesterday was talking about the Mirsky measure. So there is something like the Mirsky measure, which is which is given by mu square. In other words, mu square, which which is uh, the subshift on two symbols, zeros and ones. Uh, so this point is generic for a certain measure. This, this measure is, uh, is called Mirsky measure. And then you want to say, okay, but what I see in this formula, this Chawla conjecture or the Mebius function. So I want to see that this is Bernoulli, right? But it makes no sense, right? Because I cannot kill the Mirsky measure, right? Because I can always square any sequence I have. 
So the, the measure which we obtain is, 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 is given in the following way. If, if you take sequence of zeros and ones, our measure is living on sequences of zero and ones, but the, but the Mebius is living on, on the set of sequences with zeros, ones, and minus one. So if you want to see Bernoulli, so it means that each one is replaced by plus minus one with equal probability. In other words, it's what's called the relatively independent extension of the Mirsky measure in this, in this case. Uh, so what is, so the examples we, we have so far, so these are examples of so, of so called multiplicative functions. So in number theory, a function and arithmetic function is multiplicative if uh, u of mn is u of m u of n, uh, whenever these two numbers are co-prime. The real function is even, there is even stronger condition because it's, it's true for all n and n. But for the Mebius, you can check easily, right? If you take u of p square, so then this is equal to zero. So then it's clear that this is not, you need co-primeness to have multiplicativity to preserve. Okay, so then, okay, so, so these two functions are multiplicative, but of course there are many multiplicative functions. So notice that we, we speak now about the multiplicative structure of, of natural numbers, which is, if you compare with additive structures, so which is in a sense trivial, right? But it's cyclic, just one generator. So the multiplicative structure is, there is always, it has to be infinitely generated, right? Because we have infinitely many primes. And each multiplicative function is determined by its values on the powers of the prime because of that. Okay, so another notion which, which we need is the notion of aperiodicity. So being aperiodic means here that the, that the function does not correlate with any periodic, with any periodic sequence. So you can express this by the fact that if you take any arithmetic progression and you compute the values along this arithmetic progression and you, you, you take the mean, so then you obtain zero. So I, I wrote here this S1 because if, in general, if I write D, so then, then there is a little trouble, that, but if I take S1, so I would like to write now a general form of Chawla conjecture. <clears throat> and you see that now there are, the difference with, with the previous ones is that we have all powers, right? We have all powers. And if you didn't decipher what, why Shaula before it was something like that, I have to be Bernoulli. So you can look at this expression and now you see that this is nothing but stone weierstrass theorem, right? The, this kind of expressions, if I know that the limit exists, it determines, it determines integrals of certain of certain continuous functions, and I have to find, I have to find the measure which corresponds to the known to me values of, of, of continuous functions. So if I multiply the coordinate of, of my process, looking at co coordinates, so obtain, I obtain an algebra of continuous functions, so we apply standard, standard theorem. So this is, so in other words, Chawla Chawla conjecture in this, this, let's say, most general framework is nothing that the first and back system, uh, I, the only visible measure from you is just how measure on the infinite dimensional torus. Say it again. Okay. So patience, because I will be talking about aperiodic functions in a while, but Mebius and Bouville are aperiodic, right? So these are just, this is very classical. Okay, uh, so let's skip it. Now, now okay, so this, so this was this Chawla conjecture, but then, uh, so we can see that almost 30 years after Chawla, there, there, there appeared this Elliot conjecture. I didn't write it. What does it mean? But more or less that you come back to the previous slides and we, so we, in which we, we saw some autocorrelations, so which, uh, 
the same function with some shifts, but now we are allowed to play with, with some, we, we, we are allowed also to change function, this multiplicative function. So then it's, and it was still conjectured that all these limits are equal to zero. So this was, so this was disproved recently, as you can see. So this is by Matomeki, Rajiv, and Tao in 2015. They showed that in general, if you think in terms of aperiodic multiplicative functions, so then in fact you fail. You fail even on the level of, of Chawla of all the two. Uh, but, okay, so they gave a counter example. I will show you in a while. What is it? Uh, what is it? Is this counter example? Uh, but they also corrected Elliot's conjecture and they introduced a stronger notion of, let's say, strongly aperiodic functions. I am not giving you a definition because it would take at least five minutes. But Ruvil and you can guess that Ruvil and Nebius, of course, are strongly aperiodic. Uh, but let's, let's stay on this simpler level of aperiodic functions, right? Which is maybe for us, it's more natural. Okay, so then there are questions. What can you say in general when you have aperiodic multiplicative functions? Uh, what can you say about Faustenberg systems of them? What are possible entropies? Uh, so for example, well, I think that that, that's, that remains open is it true that if you take an aperiodic multiplicative function so then the topological entropy is positive uh no and somehow they gave a counter example but what does it mean to give a counter example well it means simply that they showed that there is, if you look at Fastenberg systems so then it, among Fastenberg systems there is it's not only it's not only this Bernoulli mesh. There is something else. So this is what they show. But the question is: Is it true that still we see this kind of external independence along another subsystem? So the question is whether the Chawla conjecture holds along a subsystem. So this was officially asked. There was. Uh, there was a, a workshop, Sarnax conjecture, I will formulate some, I will recall Sarnax conjecture in a while, at the American Institute of Mathematics, so in San Jose. So this, so this question, so they are asked as, they were asked as problem seven, seven, three. Okay, so I think I skipped this. Uh, to see some more about conjectures, uh, so Franciscinakis and Host. So three years ago, they they proved something. I will not tell you too much because I am already making too many digressions. Uh, but anyway, they were considering the logarithmic case, which seems to be a little bit easier. And so their general conjecture was that if you take any aperiodic multiplicative function. Take, I'm taking values of modulus one. So then so here, is, here is something clever, right? And you see that ergodic theory really plays a role. So you don't expect this first and back systems to be something very concrete, but you want to say, okay, but if I take the ergodic, the ergodic decomposition, so then I will see systems which are, which are known to me. Uh, so here, so here, what they conjectured is that, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, oops, ergodic components are just direct product of Bernoulli and a procyclic system. So procyclic system, what was in previous lecture was under the name of odometer. But these are just inverse limits of inverse limits of, of cyclic cyclic systems. OK, 
okay. So you can wonder, okay, but is it really, is it really correct? Just to see that, that we need ergodic theory and maybe not non-trivial knowledge already on that level. So is it true for the Mebius? Because for the Mebius, we said that, well, suppose that Chawla conjecture holds for the Mebius, so then we obtain this measure which replaces zero one sequences into sequences of zero and ones, but replaces ones by plus one minus one with the same probability, but that's obviously it's not the product measure, right? It's the relatively independent extension. But if you do a little bit ergodic theory here, so you realize that the extension which you obtain is relatively Bernoulli of the Minsky measure. And then ergodic theory or relative ergodic theory tells you that this is, this is isomorphic to direct product of this Minsky measure with something, with a Bernoulli, but it, it will not be as simple Bernoulli because you have to compute the entropy and it will be the, the Bernoulli with, with correct entropy. Okay. So now let me go to Sanak's conjecture. So Sanak's conjecture to this, well, already 11 years ago. So Sanak's conjecture uh, claims that the Mebius function is orthogonal to all systems with zero, zero topological entropy. So that's this expression. Uh, that's orthogonality. Uh, so this is for each topological zero entropy system, all F and all X. The difficulty comes from the fact that you, you claim that this is for all X. If you introduce invariant measure, so then simply holds and it doesn't see the entropy. And so here, really what, what matters is that this is for all X. So when you look, so of course it looks very simple, right? But you, you can have, when you look at, this expression, you, you can hesitate. I mean, how should I view this expression? Because there are two ways of looking at that. It's either what I see is these are uh, Cesaro averages, Birkhoff sums with weights, right? With multiplicative weights. But on the other hand, I can just reverse the role and I can say, but in fact, in number theory, in analytic number theory, there is well, established theory of computing means of, of, uh, of arithmetic functions. So in fact, I am computing the mean of, of the Mebius with ergodic weights. So of course, what I'm saying is, is something completely trivial, but these are two main strategies to try to attack this problem. Uh, so today I will not be talking about the first one, which I said, I mean, so these are Birkhoff sum with ergodic weights, it was multiplicative weights, but it's rather that these are, these are really uh, averages of multiplicative functions with ergodic weights. So the stress is multiplicative functions. So now what, what we do is that I want to see a multiplicative function as an object in ergodic theory. So these are these first of systems. And once I see, well, I can say, hopefully something deep about this first number system. So then maybe I will come back. Well, on the other hand, I have zero, zero entropy guy, right? So maybe I'll, I will apply. So Yonna explained to us, he's joined us in the sense of first attack yesterday. So maybe in fact, this theory will apply. Okay, so then so now you may think, okay, so now we switch to dynamics. So how should we view Chawla conjecture, Salmax conjecture? So a good, good way of seeing things is, is the following one, that Chawla is Bernoulli, right? Or rather relative Bernoulli. But what is Sanak then? Well, Sanak is Komogorov property. I think that this was present somehow uh, at the very beginning, intuitively, that Sanak is closer to Komogorov property. And, and you know that there are K automorphisms which are not Bernoulli, right? So then, things are becoming not clear. But, uh, so this is this just, okay. So then they, they somehow discovered 
uh, this is 2016, uh, so Vich uh, wrote lecture notes. He gave a, a course at his university, uh, it was lecture notes, unpublished till today, well, he died. Well, anyway, and there uh, he formulated conjecture. And the conjecture says that if you want to see Sanak's conjecture, so then in fact you should check all the all the Festenberg systems. And what we want to see is that the projection, the function, which is the projection on the zero coordinate, is orthogonal to the L2 of the pin square sigma algebra. Which we like, right? Because well, we have Pinsker, so it's something like e. so. If I am k, I am done, right? Because the, the Pinsker partition is trivial, and of course the mean of 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 the the mean of of the Mebius function, which is just the integral for any for any for any Festenberg system, so it has to be equal to zero. The mean is zero because of, of prime number. To see, I'm, I'm saying something which looks trivial, but the mean of the Mebius function is zero is equivalent is equivalent to the prime number theorem right? but, but anyway we can use we can use these facts okay so that's this which conjecture uh, so i just recall on this uh, this frame at the beginning of this frame i i just recall which is conjecture uh, so the, suffi uh, the sufficiency <coughs> follows <coughs> from the ergodic proof. Well, I didn't write here that the relation between Chawla, Chawla and uh, Sarnak is that Chawla implies Sarnak. <coughs> and you, you will see also, well, of course, so in this direction is unknown. But it is known that Sarnak implies Chawla along a subsequence. So this is a result of uh, Sasha Gomilko, Dominic Kretniak, and, my, and myself. <coughs> so we, please don't be surprised that we consider such an implication in a more general framework. Anyway, so the sufficiency uh, for, for the, for the which was known. Problem is, what about this direction of necessity? Okay, so, uh, so this is a very recent theorem. We put this on ARCA two months ago. Uh, and the theorem says yes, which is conjecture holds. Uh, uh, so I'm not going to talk about this. It's not the subject of, I mean, just kind of, again, of digression. Uh, but of course, this which is conjecture, now we have a theorem, so it has some consequences. One of the consequences is that we can formulate Sanax conjecture purely on the combinatorial level. I mean, we, we come back to the, to the Mebius function, and we can write what, 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 what is the property of the, of the Mebius function. And here, here the idea is that that you know all these Chawla conjecture, prime number theorem, uh, Riemann hypothesis. These are these, these are these are things about cancellations of plus and y minus ones, right? Nothing more than that. Uh, so here, Sanax conjecture turns out, of course, to be a, a weaker condition than, for example, Chawla, where we want to see an independent independent process. Uh, this is a weaker property, and and this cancellations cancellation of ones and minus ones it should be along return times of, of blocks or less right i'm not going into details because it's hard to, to write it or say it very quickly another another consequence is on the level of logarithmic sanax conjecture so it turns out that if we want to prove logarithmic sanax conjecture it's enough it's enough to check this for uh for the case of new, new systems and more so Boris was talking about new systems yesterday. I hope there is no need to 
to give any definition here. So what we want to see is that we consider only those topological systems whose ergodic measures they give you they give you new systems, and we should somehow be able to prove orthogonality to, to the Mebius function in this case. So it's it looks as well. You you see again. I mean, some I mean, how new potency is important in ergodic theory, and not only in ergodic in the theory. Okay, so I'm slowly. Let's not skip ten minutes. Huh? Okay, so now let's let's pass to, to the subject. Uh, okay, so what is an Archimedean character? So you see that the definition is very simple. You fix an, uh, fix a real number t, and then you take then the sequence which you obtain is n to the power i t. So these these are uh, these are completely multiplicative functions, of course. But they are very unpleasant. For example, they have they don't have mean. So I wrote for you here. So that's the formula. But you see that because the numerator here depends on capital N, so it changes. Well, we jump everywhere or all, all over the circle. So there is no mean. On the other hand, these are very simple functions because they. If if you look at this expression, so then you see that. The difference between these two consecutive values is going to zero. So these are so called slowly varying functions. Uh, in, well, of course, if they are slowly varying, so they are mean slowly varying. But so this that's the definition of being mean slowly varying. But I wrote this mean slow this weaker condition intentionally because you can see that then. In 2017, Kluhrman proved that mean slowly varying functions, which are multiplicative, and that's the word we are interested in. In fact, they have to be Archimedean characters. Okay, so if we think about uh, if we think about Fustenberg systems of slowly varying functions, so that we don't need multiplicativity even here. So the, in terms of what, uh, first and second system, it's, it's very, the, the answer is very simple. They are characterized by, by the fact that all the first and back systems which we obtain are simply identical. Of course, there are many probability spaces, right? uncountably standard probability spaces, because we, have, we must admit atoms. So then there are many, many, Many identities, but doesn't change. I mean, the function is slowly varying, if and only if all first and back systems are simply identical. If, here I wrote a proof because this is just so called one line proof. Uh, okay, I, I want to compute what, what, what are first and back systems, so I should look at the limit of that time. So then we take this function. Before I denoted it by pi zero, but here it's z zero. Sorry. So my, my so now now of course this z z n it, it becomes a stationary process, right? If if I fix if I if if I fix my my measure u. Uh, so let's look what is the distance between z one and z zero in L one of me. Okay, so I just wrote it here, but these are continuous functions. These are continuous functions. So then, of course, we apply this weak star topology. We have this expression, but the function is is uh, <coughs> slowly varying, to mean slowly varying. So the, the limit is zero. So z one is equal to zero, new almost everywhere. But what does it mean? So the process is completely trivial, right? Which is precisely the fact that. As a dynamical system, we obtain we obtain the identity. Okay, and then if you take, but that's a kind of exercise here. So maybe I will speed up a little bit. If you take n to the i, so you can compute explicitly all the first and back systems, and you obtain <coughs> you obtain uncountably many of them, but they are all isomorphic. On the other hand, if you take if you take logarithmic first and back systems, so here 
So this was computed by Francis Kinakis and Host, and there is only one constant tax system. So what are what are counter examples by Matomeki, Rajiv, and Tao? So they consider the following completely multiplicative functions. Uh, so we want to define a function with values in the, in the circle. Uh, and the definition says that we need two sequences such that, so the, well, the picture is that TM is smaller, blah, blah. And then if, if you look at TM, TM plus one, and you take a prime number here, so you want to see that the value is equal to this. So the parameter which is important is SM plus one, while for, while for the small prime numbers, you can only expect that you have an approximation. So of course, the definition of such functions is, is inductive. Right, this is what we want to see. It's that let's say that for all prime numbers till tm, it is defined. They are the, this function is defined already. I cannot, I cannot help it. And now I want to define this to tm plus one. But when I go to this tm plus one, so I'm choosing this sm plus one, and I, I have to tell you what is this sm plus one. So this sm plus one, we, we simply choose using ergodicity of rotations on finite dimensional tori. Because if you take these numbers with different primes, so the, the, the logarithm are the logarithm of them are linearly independent. And so the, the corresponding rotation is is ergodic, right? So I can I can be where I want. So I just choose this S M plus one so that on each coordinate, I am as close uh, to the numbers uh, which are already defined as I want. So that's the, the, the approach. You can see that in, in, on this picture, in fact, this, so you have this SM plus one here, but you may wonder what happens if I, if I take something like SM plus one to power one to, uh, to one half, one third, etc. In fact, they all they will always be here. Uh, so, in other words, we will see that this is super polynomial grows. And and it was shown by Matomeki Rajiv and Tao that once you have exponential growth, so then this function, the resulting function is aperiodic. So you see, so these are very bad functions. This this this, this Archimedean character. But when you put them in, in the right way, so then you obtain something which looks like, and in fact, it was uh, anticipated by, by Elliot that what you should obtain is, is an independent process. Right. So, they get, so this, but they show that Chao Lao for the two does, does not hold. So here's the main result of, of my joint work with, with Alex Gomilko and Thierry Delary. Which says the following: that if we take a function in this uh, MRT class, then for each d, then for each d there is a first back system, uh, which is measured theoretically isomorphic to the unipotent system. So you see some algebraic system on on the torus of dimension d plus one. Uh, okay, equipped with the well, back measure, etc. Uh, furthermore, the Bernoulli shift is also a first and system. So the the Chawla conjecture, the Chawla conjecture holds for a longer subsequence. Uh, okay, and the topological entropy of this of this matter now. Uh, this is this is infinite. Well, anyway, but we have a lot of, of, of first on that systems. Uh, you see this, this so we, we say, however, that Chawla holds a longer subsequence, which was the answer to one of the problems I mentioned before. And the reason is that if you have this algebraic system, so if, if you have this unipotent system, so they are, they are extremely non-regarded. 
right? On one coordinate, you see the identity, and then it's it's extended by extended in a fine way. So they are extremely non, non ergodic. They are in fact disjoint with an ergodic with an ergodic system. <clears throat> but you can see that on the other hand, if you look at the relevant stationary processes, even by so called uh, generalized eigenfunctions there. So you obtain processes which are d independent, but not d plus one independent. So these are zero entropy processes that have display a lot of independence, but of course globally they are not independent because well, we, we are talking about zero entropy process. Well, anyway, but now if you if you have more and more processes which are more and more independent and you are in the weak star topology so you can pass to the limit okay so the weak so the weak any weak limit which you obtain will give you globally independent process so in fact this this measures new d they really converge to to how measure on on the infinite dimensional torus okay so how measure is a first and back system okay and this gives you gives you everything uh, in fact uh, you can of course we before we were talking about sanax conjecture with the function mu but you can you can also think about sanax conjecture with this these kind of functions it fails it doesn't doesn't hold uh, which is kind of some inter uh, I, I think I will skip the zero mean property on typical short interval. But what I would like to show you is that also logarithmic Chawla conjecture holds along a subsystem, which is, of course, you cannot deduce such a result knowing that you have Chawla. Uh, for a Cesaro way of averaging. But here it is it is a particular situation. So let's 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 have a look. So uh, so so the first step is just to see logarithmic way of averaging in terms of Cesaro averaging. So this is summation summation by by parts, right? So somehow. Roughly, you can say that if, if you look at logarithmic averages, so these are logarithmic averages of Cesaro averages. Uh, okay, so that this is what you what you see here. It's a very particular situation, uh, and then uh, there, there were some. Okay, I, I think I will skip it simply. Uh, well, you can show that parameters with some parameters epsilon and d1, d2, you obtain this as a logarithmic logarithmic first and back system, and you sh you show that when epsilon is going to zero, so then this alpha is go is alpha is going to zero. So finally, we find this system as a first and back system. So that's infinite sum. So it's a little bit unpleasant, right? We didn't find this unipotent system, but we found another convex combination of this, of this unipotent systems as first and back systems in the logarithmic way of averaging. But because this D1, D1 is going to infinity, we can make it go to infinity. So all of them, they display D1 independence. I passed the limit, okay? And when D1 is going to infinity, or along a subsequence if you like, but and then I have to obtain, I have to obtain Lebesgue and Kalmer. Uh, so notice that this gives, this disproves, disproves uh, Franciscanaki's host conjecture. Because they wanted to see, they wanted to see that if you take a, a multiplicative, a periodic multiplicative function. So they wanted to see that if I take any first and back system and I, I take it, it's, it's ergodic decomposition, then we should see products of Bernoulli times procyclic times ozone. But here it's not the case. 
right? Because if I look at this, if, if I look at this expression here, so I see this new D, of course, it's a convex, infinite convex combination of, of them. But if I, if I look at the, the ergodic decomposition, I have to decompose new D, right? And then well, obtain the uh, ergodic decomposition for all of them. But if I look at the ergodic decomposition of new D, I will find irrational rotations extended in, in a fine way. And I think all, all, already people talked about that, that these are ergodic systems so or uniquely ergodic system. And these are not these are not odometers, right? In fact, it's very unclear what should be or should be even a conjecture here for this for this first of systems of, of general general aperiodic functions. Uh, So I gave this, yeah, I know, I, I, okay. I hope I'm the control, because but this second part was somehow be maybe cancelled. So I, I gave a talk <coughs> on that uh, in Columbus, of course, not in person, but, uh, and also by some other. Well, anyway, I wanted to present to you a question. Because it was, you know, usually there are different questions, but sometimes people, different people ask about the same. Maybe then you may think oh, maybe this is not by coincidence. Maybe that's a that's a that's a good question. So they, oops. So they ask whether in this class, uh, please uh, don't treat what I presented that we computed with co-authors that we computed all the first and back system, right? We presented some new D and D is a natural number, so we computed countably many first and third systems. We know that we have uncountably many first and third systems. Whether or not, may, of course, it may it may happen that this uncountably many first and third systems, it, it, they, the other they arise as convex combinations of those which are already computed, but that's not clear at all. Well, anyway, so the question is that can you can you obtain something which is product, but really non-trivial product, Cartesian product, Bernoulli, and, 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 and the new potent system? Yeah. Well, anyway, I mean, if I can add a question here, which seems to me very interesting, is that can we, so here we produce this unipotent system, they appear as first and third systems of some, some arithmetic functions, not applicative functions, but can we obtain something beyond that? So in particular, well, I think that the of, of, of course we, we we think about new systems that only new systems can be can be involved, but can we obtain something I would say more ambitious than that? Okay, thank you very much. So I think on slide 11, you said that the logarithmic Sarnak conjecture is equivalent to the orthogonality of Nubius function with uh, topological systems that uh, whose ergodic measures yield new systems or something like this. Could you explain briefly why it's enough to check the orthogonality with new systems? Or is it too complicated? <laughs> First of all, I didn't tell you that uh, Sanax, Sanax conjecture is which is really it's about Chowla. Uh, You have first and back systems, and, and you saw that my systems were very non ergodic. This is not by coincidence. Francis Kinakis proved that there is a Francis Kinakis. Oh, 
not ergodic, right? But it's, that's obvious. But if you are ergodic, then you are independent. Then you are a bit. This this kind this and what we did I mean Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I want to say I am the last speaker of the, of the conference. I, I think that, well, this, this conference will be very memorable for all of us because that's, well, maybe best of all because of our Jubilee, Felix, celebrate Felix last day. It's really great. Uh, and the other, the other reason is that well, that's the first real conference. I, I think it's just I feel maybe I should speak on, the, on behalf of myself, but I feel really participating in a, in a real conference, and I hope that everybody, everybody does. So I think that we should really thank the organizers. Of the of the conference for the idea and for being brave, and finally for realizing realizing this conference. So let I think let us thank Piotr, Christoph, yeah, I, 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 <laughs> Felix, uh, Artem, and uh, and Let, Let, Letizia. Yes. So these five five organizers. So let's thank them. Short announcement, uh, I would like to invite everyone for the uh, next conference we organized in Bendlevo uh, on uh, starting September 26th on geometric complexity of Julia sets. You all are very welcome to attend. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>